<laughs> wow, amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm born in language filmmaker, so I have a translator here. Please understand. <laughs> no. <laughs> 그 자막, 서브타이틀의 장벽을 장벽도 아니죠. 한 1인치 정도 되는 그 장벽을 뛰어넘으면 여러분들이 훨씬 더 많은 영화를 즐길 수 있습니다. Once you overcome the one inch tall barrier of subtitles, you will be introduced to so many more amazing films. <laughs> this was Bong Joon Ho's opening statement of his acceptance speech for the Golden Globe for Best Foreign Language Film for his film Parasite. A film that a month and change later would become the first ever film not in the English language to win the Oscar for Best Picture. An event that made most people like myself go, Wow, that should not have taken that long. Like the Oscars had been going on for 92 ceremonies, and this was the First time? And why? Why do we let that one inch barrier impact how we see the entire world of film? The important thing to note about that Golden Globe speech is that despite it winning Best Picture at the Oscars a month later, it wasn't even up for Best Picture at that Golden Globe ceremony. In fact, it wasn't even eligible. See, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, the organization that organizes the Golden Globes, dictates that any film nominated for Best Drama or for Best Musical slash Comedy must have, at minimum, 50% of its spoken dialogue in the English language, which led to films like Parasite, The Farewell, and Pain and Glory all being excluded from those categories at that 2020 ceremony. Why these rules didn't apply to films like Babel and Inglorious Bastards was not openly stated, though I think some of you may have some hints. Parasite has certainly not been alone, and in fact, we're having this conversation again this very year, and I think the absurdity is finally breaking through to people. For this year's 2021 ceremony of the Golden Globes, the HFPA announced publicly that Minari would not be allowed to compete in the Best Drama category, as it did not reach those thresholds of spoken English dialogue. This is all in spite of it being an American production, set in America, filmed in America, being released by an American production company, and being about living in America. It was instead designated as a foreign language film and not allowed to compete. The obvious ridiculousness of saying that a story about American immigrants set in America is somehow foreign is not lost on people. In fact, there was a huge controversy surrounding this decision. This isn't helped by the fact that it seems really weird and archaic to set a language requirement in a country with no official language. Not to mention the exceptions I already mentioned that were made in the past. This all just seemed like a terrible idea. But that's the thing, if this was just award shows getting it wrong, I wouldn't even bother. I mean, award shows getting it wrong are like the entire main thing of award shows. And the Oscar goes to... Crash! Hell, it's also the Golden Globes we're talking about. I mean, do the winners even care about Golden Globes? But see, it's not just the award shows. It's a much larger issue. Because like it or not, and trust me, I do not like it. 
These award shows represent what Hollywood is going to market to a certain part of the population. And the fact they think they can completely look over these films says a lot about what they think the population thinks of these films. And it's not unfounded. It's no secret that in general, English-speaking filmgoers have been generally disinterested in films outside of their primary language. It's not hard to see the obvious eye-rolling hatred seen in stereotypical portrayals of so-called artsy-fartsy foreign language films. And while some films certainly have broken through that mold to be successful, the expectations of American box office returns for films not primarily in English is way below the pay grade of what is considered successful for an English language film. And while sure, you can definitely say that not all awards movies do well at the box office, I think it says a lot that these award shows and Hollywood in general think that they can cut out an entire world of cinema and no one will care. I think it says a lot that if you just dragged a random person off the street, more than likely, they would say they don't watch these films. Hell, Netflix even conducted a study on American sentiment towards films not in the English language, and the results were, quote, super depressing, in fact, to a point where they just threw it all out. I can't believe you're all making me defend Netflix. Me, of all people, defending Netflix. But you're making me do it. The main complaint used by many is the issue of subtitles, with many arguing that they can't focus on the action or visuals of the films when reading subtitles. In a way, I get it. Some people have disabilities that make reading subtitles difficult, eyesight can be an issue, and it can take some major getting used to. I get it. And I'm not gonna bemoan anyone who just simply can't do it. But, I also think it's not impossible for most people, and while, yes, it may take some getting used to, it is not the hurdle many people think of it as, but instead, well, that one inch barrier. And you may even be subtly used to the concept too. Closed captioning has become extremely common in most households due to its use in streaming services. I guarantee you, you've watched a movie with closed captioning on. It just was in English. And the step up isn't as high as you might think it is. And if I wanted to, I could unpack every single systemic issue that plays into America's perception on a cultural level of these films not in English language. I mean, racism certainly plays a part into it. Americentrism does. But getting into those systematic weeds often doesn't describe it on a personal level, and there's never going to be a complete correct answer. And I don't think I'm quite equipped to talk about some of those points. Instead, I want the purpose of this video to be about why you should be watching these films. Because if you have even a passing interest in anything I've mentioned so far, if I've swayed your mind a little bit in some way, I'm telling you, you're missing out on so much. Try to not think about all the reasons why you won't watch these films and instead what you might gain from hearing me out. I mean, it's a statistical improbability that all the best films in the world are made by the US and the UK. And yet a lot of people kind of think of these films as expendable. That there isn't anything there for them and they're not going to find anything worth that effort. And those are just absolute myths. While America may be considered the largest film industry in the world, film is a global medium of entertainment. And there are several countries whose production can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with American productions. And while I may personally be a fan of a lot more difficult films, and certainly that's kind of the focus of this channel, that isn't the only thing present in films on the English language. In fact, you'd be surprised. 
film taste is eclectic and unique, and I'm not going to just recommend a bunch of three hour slow moving experimental art films as an entry point to foreign cinema. Though they are really good and I will continue to talk about them on this channel. Anyway, but honestly, I don't think I have to. Because so many films you've enjoyed have been impacted by foreign language cinema in some way. If it weren't for the French New Wave, we wouldn't have Pulp Fiction. Tim Burton's style wouldn't exist without the classic German Expressionists. And the number of filmmakers to cite Akira Kurosawa as an influence is incredibly staggering. The most iconic of them being Magnificent Seven, which is a western remake of Seven Samurai, and a little known sci-fi film where the director said he took major influence from The Hidden Fortress. You might have heard of this one. And that's another topic too. There have been so many films remade into English because they were just that good. The Departed, based on a film from Hong Kong. Insomnia, based on a film from Norway. The Birdcage, based on a film from France. And The Ring, based on a film from Japan. Hell, even Three Men and a Baby and True Lies were based on French films. Which is surprising, but absolutely true. Frankly, whatever genre you're looking for, there's an absolutely excellent film, not in the English language, that's going to fulfill your needs. Comedy, drama, romance, sci-fi, musicals, tons of horror and action, and don't even get me started on the tons of stellar foreign language animation. I honestly think you're missing out if you don't let yourself enjoy these wonderful films. And it helps that many of these films offer looks at communities and nations we may not know much about. Studies have long shown that representation in media often helps curve intolerance and breeds understanding. And I think the more you're able to watch these films, the more you'll realize that you might have more in common with an impoverished teenage street gang in Brazil, or a grieving widow in France, or an indigenous housekeeper in Mexico. They're beautiful, powerful, funny, sorrowful, just engrossing. They're anything an American film can be. Because at the core of film, as in any art form, is humanity. That's why we watch film. To see humanity. And no language barrier is going to take that away. I think Bong Joon-ho said it best himself when he ended his speech with this. I think we use only just one the language, the cinema. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to give a special thanks to my $10 a month patrons, Corey Fuimona, Aerith, Cameron Kanaki, Trent Mottier, and Paige. Is he?